welcome to the magnificent magic show. I am your magician, Miss Cat. And I am going to perform a magic trick. If you focus closely, you won't believe your eyes. Watch closely. Magic! It worked! There's no more penny! But really, where'd the penny go? Huh. I didn't think that would actually work. Where's the penny? Huh. Where's the penny? That is weird. You know what? Magic requires a whole lot of faith. And each week this summer, we're focusing on what it means to have faith. Faith is trusting in what we can't see because of what we can see. Even though we can't see God, we can put our faith in God. We can trust God no matter what. We can focus on all the amazing things that God has done in our lives and in the lives of others. And we can trust in that. Speaking of faith, trust, we're going to play a game called the Focus Relay. I need two volunteers. Hannah! Julie, come on up. Okay, everybody, this is Miss Julie and Miss Hannah, and they are going to play the game with me. Okay, so how you play this game is you're going to put on these awesome glasses, and you really can't see anything with these glasses. It's going to take a lot of focus. Okay, so you put on these glasses, and then I'm going to spin you around 10 times. Then, after you get your focus, you're going to walk this green line. When you get to the end of the line, I'm gonna hand you a football. You're going to try to throw the football into the basket. If you miss, I will get the football, get it back to you. You're going to try as many times as you can to get it into the basket. Once you do get it into the basket, you're going to perform a little dance move, but you have to stay on the green line. Then you're going to power walk to the end of the green line. It's going to take a lot of focus, but the contestant with the most focus and graceful performance wins. And I am the judge. Miss Julie, would you like to start first? Sure. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Put on these lovely glasses. You are correct. You definitely have to focus hard. You can't see anything. Okay. So we're going to spin around 10 times. Ready? Go ahead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Woo! <laughs> 
The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he 
made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through 9. If anyone was set up for the good life, it was Saul of Tarsus. Greetings. Though Saul's family was Jewish, he was also born a Roman citizen. Throughout his life, he was known by two different names. You may call me Saul or Paul. As a young man, Saul was sent to Jerusalem to study with the famous Rabbi Gamaliel. Let's see. You have achieved 100% in classical literature, 111% in philosophy, and in ethics, 99%. Oh. Oh, I vow to do better. Saul became a Pharisee like his father before him. He carefully studied God's law and prayed three times a day. Dear God, help me follow your laws 100% perfectly. Like the other religious leaders in Jerusalem, though, Saul was caught off guard by the events that surrounded the life and death of Jesus. Good riddance. Now that fool can't try to overturn God's laws anymore. Haven't you heard? Jesus' followers says he's returned to life. They've seen Jesus? They've seen Jesus. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, those riffraff will slink away soon enough. Against all odds, the followers of Jesus didn't fade away. In fact, the numbers began to grow. Five thousand? You're telling me that 5,000 people are following the way of a dead man? Well, technically, they think he's alive. Uh, not helping. The religious leaders in Jerusalem did everything they could to squash the new movement. They even arrested a leader among the Jesus followers named Stephen. After telling lies about him, they dragged him outside the city. This man is a disgrace. Saul stood by and held the coats of the men who picked up stones and threw them at Stephen until they killed him. If Stephen had just let go of this Jesus nonsense, he wouldn't have had to die. It's terrible. I heard people are following the way of Jesus in other cities too. What? Inconceivable. Saul quickly became known for hunting down people who believed in Jesus. When he discovered that some Jews in Damascus were following Jesus, he went straight to the high priest. Ah, uh, this Jesus thing is spreading everywhere. I'm aware. They think he's alive. Hashtag, yup. Someone should do something. I hope you have something constructive to say. Give me letters to the synagogues in Damascus so I can arrest all the believers and bring them back here. Now you're talking. Saul set off for Damascus with the blessing of the high priest. He traveled with a group of men to arrest the believers they found. After days on the road, they neared the city. There it is. We'll make it by lunch. No, we must take time to pray. As he did three times every day, Saul stopped and turned to Jerusalem to pray. Certain God was on his side. Dear Lord, help me to catch every single one of those despicable Jesus people. Suddenly, a light more brilliant than the midday sun blazed down around Saul. He staggered, fell to the ground, squeezing his eyes shut against the glare. Saul, Saul, why are you opposing me? Saul gasped. It felt as though the whole earth shifted beneath him. Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus. I am the one you are opposing. The men around Saul stared in horror and confusion, unable to speak. They could see no one but heard a sound, perhaps like a roar of thunder. Now get up and go into the city. There you will be told what you must do. Saul reeled. He struggled to his feet and finally opened his eyes. He saw nothing, only darkness. What, what's happened? You tell us. We saw the light, you fell, and this sound and then you said... I can't see. What? I can't see. I've been blinded. Uh, that's not good. Here, take my hand. Saul grasped the man's hand and shuffled a few steps forward. 
Who were you talking to? I, I think, I think it was Jesus. You heard Jesus? I heard Jesus. Saul's companions led him into Damascus, where he stayed at the home of a man named Judas on Straight Street. Uh, want something to eat? I'm not hungry. Or water? Not thirsty. For three days, Saul wrestled with himself and God. He'd come face to face with the very man he knew was dead, but discovered that Jesus was very much alive. Now blind, Saul was forced to see everything in a brand new light. church you can find the link in the comments below if you have any questions or need anything please reach out to us we're always here for you please stay happy and healthy and we'll see you next time